Welcome back, everybody, to Down to Earth with me, Christian Harloff. This is UAP Tuesday. And yeah, the episode's out a little late, but on purpose. Because I have mentioned many times over on my show, there's only one reporter I feel that's really getting the answers from Congress out there. The only reporter that's really on the ground that is consistently putting pressure on them. And a lot of the stories that I continue to talk about here, about the hearings, and you see it a lot of the times, it's coming from this reporter. And he is Matt Laszlo from Ask a Poll, and I'm happy to have him on the show again. And you've been really putting pressure on me. And I, first of all, as I said in the intro, thank you for what you're doing out there. Um, because I think, and here's what I ask you, though, too, and I'm sure for you, the answer is good. I'm glad nobody else is doing it. But why isn't anybody else really doing this? You know, it was just me, Ask a Poll, and then uh, our friends at News Nation. They were there. No one else. Well, then it was interesting. Two or three months later, they had another briefing. And that one, you had Fox News, CNN, right. uh, Washington Post, uh, The Hill. So you had all these other organizations. And that's where they're watching what we do. And the more that they see us crash the internet with scoops that they could have because they've got teams of right. dozens you <laughs> doing this. It, is that the reporting. case though? But Matt, yeah. is that the case really though too? Because like, look at look at like when you talk about like News Nation, what they did when they covered with Grush, right? Like you look at News Nation's YouTube channel. This is the YouTube channel and the clip outs, yeah. when they're covering Trump, when they're covering um, Biden and Harris, they're not getting the types of you know yeah. views that CNN or, or Fox is getting. But they cover UFO stuff, and it's through the roof. Um, right. And they they stopped, and they pulled back a little bit more. Um, they, they're starting to cover it more, but they were covering it, like, excessively during that time. You would yeah. assume, because you're not covering just the woo-woo stuff. You're covering when's the hearing, what's happening, who's testifying, uh, why is Schumer and Rounds doing this? And you would assume that more people, even people yeah. thought, because you don't take a stance of whether or not you necessarily believing, not believing, you're just wondering what Congress is saying. I'm baffled that more people aren't doing this. And don't forget, and this is where a lot of my colleagues, especially their corporate uh, overlords in the media, um, have such a short memory, but that's kind of something I'm able to do is just to have a memory for one, but then also to use it. and. I got into this, for one, because of David Grush's claims last year, yeah. because he put it all in Congress's lap and said, hey, the executive branch is lying to you all. And what has Congress done? They've shrugged. Right. Well, I'm like, hey, either debunk Grush, you know, reclaim the mantle of like, hey, no, we're Congress and right. we don't allow the White House to lie to us or tell us what you know, <laughs> you know, get to the bottom of his claims. A hundred percent. Yeah. But before Gresh came out, like I think last May, you we had American airspace invaded by a balloon. Right. <laughs> and right. that problem, even though there's disagreement on what happened after that with the other three objects that were shot down by the U.S. Air Force, which we've still been asking about, you have had Congress just play ostrich and the media go along with it. And I'm like, no, no, no. If U.S. airspace can be invaded by a balloon, then why are we dropping about a trillion bucks a year of our taxpayer dollars on uh, the Pentagon and right. all these military, like the military industrial complex? Like if we can't, if we don't even know what's above our airspace. And like, again, when it comes to someone like uh, Senator Mark Kelly, he doesn't, you know, you bring up UFOs, you uh, extraterrestrials, boom, you lose him instantly right. in the conversation. But he pressed, I believe it was the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he pressed them on the persistent problem of what he calls drones, mm -hmm. but they don't know what they are. So they're UAPs right. in like the most true sense, but about the persistent problem of drone or uh, incursions over Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. We had the same thing with Senator Tim Kaine in Virginia, and I'm in D.C., so Virginia's in back of me, yeah. <laughs> to the south of me, right. but Tim Kaine pressed the head of, I believe it was North and Southcom, mm -hmm. uh, in a public hearing about the intrusion over Langley Air Force Base. We also had Gillibrand talk about that problem when she was at classified briefings out in Nevada. Yep. Mike Rounds brings it up in South Dakota. A lot of them are convinced this is just foreign adversaries. Like, that's wild. Right. So they think, like especially Mark Kelly, he thinks America is now regularly and persistently and consistently 
our airspace is invaded by foreign adversaries because he thinks it's just drones. Sure. Well, sir, get to the effing bottom of that. Right. Like, can we stop everything else until we get foreign actors out of our airspace? Right. And then if they investigate it more, maybe we'll actually find out what they are. Because for now, Pentagon doesn't even seem to know. No, it doesn't. No, no. And And that's insane. And what's insane to me is when, because I listen to all your interviews. And I listen to everything that you've been, uh, the stuff that you, when you're pressing them on, the thing that I find kind of concerning is even the people that are really deep into this thing, right? Like you just talk, so who's it? Is it, is, so who's running the next hearing? Nancy. Um, Nancy Mace. Thank you. Na- Nancy, Nancy Mace is, is running the next hearing. And I liked her answer, obviously, is I need to get people on this list who know some shit. I, 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 that's like, yeah. fact, that's a good answer. However. Yeah. The fact that she doesn't know the name of Tim Gallaudet is a problem. That's a problem. Well, well. so in her defense there, she was telling me she wasn't using names oh, okay. on purpose. Oh. The, the community kind of outed Tim. Like, sorry, bro. Yeah. Um, but that's where I think. So she was Tim trying to keep it quiet. That Luna. Yeah. She's actually got the name of another person who she wants to come okay. in. Okay. And that's where in that last okay. one, we kind of go silent a couple of times. Yeah. Because she's telling me the name of one person. Okay. Gal Udet, I believe, is the person who um, the UAP caucus, I believe Luna and uh, Congressman Timber Chet want uh, Gal Udet. So yeah. she was trying to not release their news. Okay. But yeah. I understand. Okay. That makes sense. Because I had him because I, I, he, he was inevitable only because... I had him on the show, and Matt, I asked him point blank. I said, if they ask you to testify, would you do it? Within seconds, he said, I absolutely would. He didn't hesitate at all. He said, I absolutely would. And that's the type of guy that you want up there talking about. And there was yeah. other, do you, do you, are, you hearing, are you hearing names right now, the people that are coming in to testify? And how, see, let, me, let me start with this. Because you got the, the story from Gillibrand saying that this one hearing is going to happen. My personal opinion is this: that this is kind of a cockamamie uh, arrow hearing of look who this new pawn is, and and it's, it's over gonna, in the Senate. Yeah, it doesn't. It, I don't take any merit to it. It's the it's this one that you're talking about um, with whether it's Gallaudet or whoever. That's the one. It seems like they want to blow the lid off of this thing. Are you hearing yeah. any names that you're like? Really, because I'm hearing Carl Nell, I'm hearing um, Lekatsky, I'm hearing a bunch of people. So, not allowed to say who I've heard. And last I talked, well, so Mace, she says it in our interview, which is at askapoll.com, she says they had to actually move the hearing from September to November because of this person's schedule. Okay. And even though Gal Udet is a veteran, she really wanted um, another perspective uh there you know very much from the armed forces because she's a veteran herself yeah and um i think they're the one thing that stands out from that mace exclusive that we dropped last Mm -hmm. week is she um she says herself and then she stops her but she goes yeah it's kind of going to be a grab bag (laughs) because i think she wanted one direction with you know ufos right in the sky yeah and then you had um uh, Congresswoman Luna, she'd been telling us for months at USOs, Apple, yeah. that she wanted to focus on USOs. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting because even for Chat, he's told us, you know, one of the co chairs yep. of the UAP caucus, he's told us for months that he doesn't think the point of these hearings should be making their case. He more wants to really get into the reason the executive branch is being so secretive. And he wants to really blow that up. I think there's disagreement because some of the other members, especially Mace, who she kind of comes at it with like, hey, I've got to really make the case, especially right. now that I've got the galley or the um, the gavel and that it's her hearing. She's like, I still need to make the case for one to a lot of my colleagues in the Republican Party mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> or two to a lot of her constituents, because sometimes they get accused of, you know, wasting time. Why are you doing this? So she really wants to make that bigger case where other people on the UAP caucus are like, hey, the case has already been made. You know, let's just get to brass tacks. And so because Congress has been derelict of duty for 50 years, you're going to have those disagreements and people are going to be coming at it at different paces. But I think we can all say like, hey, at least there's now attention on this and then we'll see what where they go from there are you buying the whole thing with the schedule for why they moved to november because i had when i was talking to lester nare and we were kind of 
before you had gotten the, the scoop of when it would, actually was, we were kind of guessing when it would be, and Lester guessed November. And he guessed November because the, the idea of it behind it was kind of like the two of us were talking where I think I thought it would have been a mistake to do it any time before November because the election is just what everybody is consumed by at the moment. And it also seems that if they, I thought they were going to do it after, well, that's when Lester said he, he thought it would be actually uh, after whoever wins is announced because then yeah. they're going to get the win on this if it's, a, if it's as big as Luna and Brichette and everybody hopes it is. But the question is, do they want to have a win if it's not their team? Well, and so this is the interesting thing, and this gets a little like nerdy political wise, but we'll have the election, I think November 8th. Yes. Or is it November 6th? Somewhere in there. Then November 13th, that'll be the next week. The new Congress, they're going to be here for freshman orientation there. Right. <laughs> right. Usually I meet them at the airport, you know, and they like literally go through freshman orientation, like I give to my students or whatever. And so it's going to be interesting because we'll see there's going to be counter currents like it might be utterly unpoliticized because all the energy of the election will be sucked out of town that's like best case scenario this right. is a highly politicized town every day of the year yeah. and so you know the election if anything it might intensify that and so i could see them strategically not wanting it to do it ahead of the election, just like they ran out of time, because a lot of these members have wanted it. They've just been pushing, and it, sure. it took them so long to even get simple skip briefings. Yeah. And the first skip briefing, they were like, wait, they literally told us stuff that we've read in the New York Times. You know, they've, they've told us stuff that we've already had on Ask a Poll. Yeah. Like, what was that? Why was that classified? And then they were taken more seriously, the second one. And so, I think there's been a lot of frustration with them over that timeline. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this and this, let's all take a step back. This remains a nonpartisan issue. Like you have AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, coming out of that second classified skip briefing with members of the Freedom Caucus, you know? I felt, I felt it was. I felt it was at one point. But I felt that it started to get as the as the election got closer. I felt it started to get because Burchett, who has been someone who was leading, and and when all the hearings were going on at the time, he was talking. Look at my buddy Moskowitz. Look at my buddy this person, and 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 he was talking about that. And then once Garcia tried to get the thing with the UAPD, then it was like, oh, he's yeah. a Democrat. He's not going to be able to do it. And it's like, what yeah. are you doing? What are you doing? That's and we kind of called him out a little bit at Ask a Poll, yeah. but yeah, Garcia. And these are younger members and. Washington, like the dysfunction of the swamp. And I think, so remember, I'm a media professor. I teach uh, political communications at Johns Hopkins where I did my master's. I hate, you know, this is like Professor yeah, Laszlo talking. Yeah. The fact that they've now politicized everything. They've yes. politicized sports. they politicized media, you know, where movies, you get coffee. Everything. Guys, don't let the political class politicize your lives. Yep. <laughs> like your day-to-day -day lives, for the most part, from who I've talked to across the nation, even when it's small business owners, like my dad complaining, my dad's complaints were actually with the Illinois mm. uh, EPA, not with the national EPA. And so that's where the, the political class wants to take your money and get you all revved up off of everything happening in your community even though this Congress is so terrible and so dysfunctional, like even the people in this Congress, you know, because the head of the Freedom Caucus, Bob Good, called me yeah. out and he was like, what do you mean? Like, maybe we don't want to pass a bunch of new stuff. I was like, sir, no, 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 no. You can't even unwind the administrative state like you want to and like you right. promised. Like, you guys can't even pull things back. Like, right. there's just dysfunction all around. And so... Each party has become great at selling mm -hmm. doomsday scenarios from the other ones. But guys, this Congress is so bad, they've made themselves irrelevant in your lives on a lot of stuff. Granted, not the UAP issue, yeah. but that's where seeing someone try to politicize this issue, 
I kind of had to like spank him a little bit I, academically glad, and just be like, hey, this is a safe space. I'm glad I'm glad <laughs> you did because honestly, I learned more about, I mean, I, I find myself read up on politics and stuff when I, I but but I've learned more about who's in Congress even more so now because of following this topic and certain people that I didn't know before and watching what their stance is and how they handle it is is very important to me for sure as I'm checking this out, but I know. Hey guys, thanks for watching the show. Listen, I have been there so many times where I've had subscriptions that I've been going through my phone, didn't even realize I still had them. I signed up at one point. I said, what am I doing? I'm wasting all this money. And I stopped doing that a while ago because I have Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a subscription service, and it is amazing. It's a personal finance app that helps you find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending, and it helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. You get alerts if bills increase in price, there's unusual spending activity, or if you're close to going over budget. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 5 Hundred million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to seven hundred and forty dollars a year when using all the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to RocketMoney.com/dte. That's RocketMoney.com/dte. This thing keeps me organized. I've been using it for so long. I really love Rocket Money. I have it on my phone. I, I literally have an update right there. Um, I love Rocket Money, and you will too. So. Check it out. The link's in the description. So, so tell me a little bit about Mike Turner. I know that you have a, you don't have a, uh, it's, he, I feel like he's been avoiding you. I'm making some progress. Wait, are you? Um, so him and I, I can't totally talk about it, but I had a great, great conversation with him. Gave him totally off the record just because, you know, I've been beating him up online a little bit. Yeah a lot maybe uh the past few months so i really wanted to like you know see inside the man's soul so i gave him off the record more than i usually do to folks and um it's interesting in the ndaa context um now i'm really curious who in the house gives a bleep about the issue you know when it comes to chuck schumer's uapda amendment yeah. because it doesn't seem like folks on the House Intel Committee care about the issue at all. And that's Jim Himes, who I know well, Connecticut congressman who I used to cover for uh, WSHU's mm -hmm. NPR station in Fairfield, Connecticut, and the WNPR, so I know Himes well. He laughs off the issue. You know, he kind of gets frustrated with Still me, like, not. oh, you're going to ask me about this again? He'll talk to me on anything else. And actually, he does talk to me on this. He just doesn't think it's an issue because he believes what he's been told from the folks at Arrow, yeah. which many in this community laugh off like, wait, you believe Arrow? Right. Um, and so it's been interesting as I've been pulling the thread since last year, 2023, around this time when the NDAA uh, talks were going on right now with the NDAA hanging over like there, that's been punted till after the election but as senator rounds told us an, ex an exclusive at ask a poll and he's the republican co-author with schumer on yeah. the uapda so it's not over he yet, says right? he says hey it's not over yeah. we still have a chance to get yeah. this through i have not found a single person in house intel or house armed services who cares about this issue and like there are people in house intel like andre carson who cares about this issue I just don't. I haven't. It's a low. Where he it's cares a low about priority. this issue. Uh, yeah. He's not trying to gut Schumer's UAPDA. Right. And so, from the principles, and this is where I'm now very curious whether it's one of the chiefs of staff or whether, like, who's in the background. Because when you have members, especially powerful members, who don't care about an issue, but that their committee has jurisdiction over doesn't mean that their committee stops having jurisdiction. Right. It just means that someone else is going to have their voice heard. And so when you have the principals, Himes and Turner, not mm -hmm. caring about the issue, according to what uh, I hear, then it's like, well, who does? And that's where, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when people say deep state, I'm like, all right, it might not be that deep. But there's a secret of state. I'm curious because it's like, yeah, I mean, there's only so much, though, when... 
he never made any comments about it. Like for me, if it's, and if, if enough people are pointing saying, "Hey, you're the one that did this. You're the one that did this," and he never, if if I didn't give a crap about the the issue, and people kept saying, "Hey, you're the one that did this," I'm like, I I don't care enough about this. I, it wasn't wasn't me. I mean, make make a comment about it. There's been no yeah. comment whatsoever. And there's also the Mitch McConnell. McConnell uh, rumors or someone around the side so whatever it might be it's like someone clearly is trying to hold back on it and i ask you this because in after all the grush stuff happened at the end of the year they were well at the soul foundation they made this whole big thing gallaudet's another one who was speaking at it and and they made a whole big thing of how the schumer rounds bill was going to be the thing that kind of just started it all and they were banking on the fact that it was going to pass in its current form last year and it was gutted didn't happen so in january january happens and in both it was Lou Elizondo, amongst others, uh, said 2024 is going to be a big year. Hang on to your hats. And, and James Fox was another one who made that mention. Yeah. Well, James Fox has this, this documentary coming out now in um, the program, which is right. really covering what's happening inside of Congress with all of this. What do you know about the doc? Do you know anything that is going to be, and if you don't know anything about it, is it, yeah, I don't. Is it strong enough? Do you think that it, that it could actually move the needle that t maybe something new comes out or so some, whether it's a new whistleblower or anybody else, too, that appears in this hearing that's supposed to happen in November? Well, and don't forget that the biggest complaint uh, that this Congress, Republicans and Democrats, bicameral, both sides of uh, the Capitol, the biggest complaint they've had with Arrow is, you know, like Marco Rubio, the vice chair of Senate Intel. He kind of said it best in an interview with us at Ask a Poll where he's like, was so frustrated with Kirkpatrick because he's like, we have whistleblowers now like hitting us up in Congress. He's like, this is the reason we created Arrow. And they, like at the end of last year, uh, Mark Warner, the chair of the Senate Intel Committee and Mark Rubio, the vice chair of Senate Intel, they went and had a meeting with Kirkpatrick one on one or three, all three of them. And they were pushing him like, hey, you are failing at your most basic duty. Whistleblowers are hitting us up because they don't trust you. Yeah. And so and then we also reported that Senator Rounds met one on one with Kirkpatrick. Gillibrand, she met one on one with Kirkpatrick, pushing him on this. And so that's where we know there are a lot of whistleblowers who've been lining up to tell their stories. They just don't trust the arrow. Right. And so that's where, like, Kirkpatrick and his kind of, like, uh, little tour to, like, heal his name uh, is such bullshit. Yeah. Absolute bullshit. Because, no, 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 you were told by the people who created you that you were failing. So you can't go out there now and be like, oh, there's no there there. You didn't even hear from the witnesses that Congress has heard from because they don't trust your agency. And so that's where... It'll be interesting with Senator Gillibrand. Right. She says she wants to have, and she says it's scheduled, a November hearing with Arrow. It's interesting because what she wants to do is for them to go through and say, like, hey, this is how we've identified all of these. So it's damage then control. She also wants them to say, this is why we haven't been able to identify all of these objects. Yeah. And so I doubt within this community it's going to really change any minds, but it might. But it's going to be interesting to see their metrics and what her and other senators who really feel some ownership, like Arrow just popped up and was just created a couple years ago. So, like, in many senses, Tillibrand's got kind of like a motherly relationship. Like, she wants this thing to work. Like, it's their baby. Right. Um, and so, like, they still have a little bit of hope and faith that Arrow can do what they set it up to do. And so... It's going to be interesting to see inside their minds, um, especially the minds of the new head of Arrow, because the whole question becomes, well, how much information does Arrow get? I don't think like, Arrow... We believe the people at the top of the Pentagon are giving them full access to everything. I, th I think Arrow has lost their credibility. I think Arrow, Arrow yeah. is essentially movie pass. If you you know it, it's like nobody you can't you just can't take them serious anymore and I think I feel like that's what this hearing is it's kind of like a PR fix like you know it's like let's and and I don't think anybody is being fooled at least people who are following this it'll be one of those things where yeah if you if you don't follow this topic and you're reading through and you're like oh there was a hearing with Arrow and 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 this type of well, thing that's where that one might be a good one for your 
folks uh, who are watching, because um, Gillibrand started me. This is my little congressional yeah. Facebook. But Gillibrand, she's the head of uh, the Emerging Threats and Capabilities Subcommittee. Yeah. So who do we have on that? Uh, Gillibrand, Senator Shaheen, uh, Senator Warren. So Shaheen's from New Hampshire, Warren from uh, Massachusetts, Peters from Michigan, Rosen from Arizona, and Kelly from Arizona. Uh, Republicans, you have Cotton from Arkansas, Mullen from Oklahoma, Bud from North Carolina, Schmidt from Missouri, uh, and then Ernst from Iowa. Maybe, like, your community obviously knows a lot more about this issue than a lot of those members. And I bet a lot of those members probably aren't even going to show up to it. Right. So if they hear from your folks, especially any of you folks who live in their states, hey, you might be able to actually, for one, give them questions to ask. But, two, you might be able to actually get them to show up. Because a lot of these subcommittee hearings are just empty. They probably don't think. Just, probably think it's like, they probably think it's like a woo-woo thing. But, I like, so yeah. let's end it with this, then. And let's talk about this November hearing one more time, because tell me what you can and what you're able. You know, there's some things, obviously, that you are either saving or just can't the talk house about. one. Yeah, for the house one, because what I want to know about it is this. There was rumors that the first one was supposed to have 40 plus witnesses. And then Brichette himself said that NASA reached out. It would never have 40 witnesses. That's never been done in the history That's, of Congress. He was saying unless like the Titanic goes down and they so, have forty witnesses. Right. And you'd be or there. Select you'd be, committee you'd, on J six. You'd be there for they six might months. They had hundred witnesses, but that was over ten right. hearings or whatever. Well, I think they said forty witnesses over in general who would come forward. But I think that what yeah. what he said when initially when the hearing was happening, that he was asked. I forget. It might have been News Nation, and he asked him. He said that there were a handful of witnesses that NASA came and said to them, "Don't." Don't do that. And he lost that. So Burchett's like, I'm not telling you who's in this one. Because because last yeah. time I did that, NASA approached him, and he straight out called out NASA. So are you, as we as said before, with the people who are potentially going to be out there and the names that you're hearing that you can't talk about, but this has to be a very impactful hearing. We can't do another one of these things as impactful as the first one was. We can't do another, well, I heard from somebody who heard from somebody who heard from somebody. This has to be direct contact stuff, and it has to be impactful. And that's exactly what Nancy Mace wants. Because yeah. again, it feels like Mace, because she presents herself as one of like the most bipartisan members of Congress, and like she can back that up a little bit. She's got some street cred to back that up. But you can tell that with some of the, a lot of the UAP caucus members are younger. And, you know, especially when it comes to, uh, Burchett, yeah. Luna, and Matt Gates, who isn't technically on um, the Freedom Caucus or the UAP Caucus. He's friendly with both, but he's been a champion for the issue. Like, they're all used to being seen as pariahs. And right. so they're not trying to, like, convince the mainstream that, like, hey, this is, like, something that's worthy of you thinking about. You know, they're used to being in their own bubbles. Right. Um, and so that's where Nancy Mace, she's really trying to, for one, legitimize her time and attention being mm -hmm. spent to the issue. But in that, she wants to legitimize the investigation of the issue. And so that's where what she's looking for. I don't know if they're active duty, but she really wants service members um, on there. And she wants that gravitas because for her, she what? I think she was the first female ever um, at the Citadel, you know? And so then I think she went to one of the armed services. Um, but anyway, so she really prizes the voices of active duty and uh, veterans. Right. And so that's where she feels like they have more legitimacy. And so that's where that's definitely what she's going to bring to the table with a witness that she hasn't announced yet. Um, and someone, you know, higher up in the ranks, but I will let her announce their name. But then it's interesting that you also, for other reasons, you have UAP caucus mm -hmm. pushing stout veterans. And so it's, we'll see. Um, they, because it's taken so long, I bet each member has a list of 10 or 20 who they like up there. Um, 
but they're going to have to winnow it down to the four or whatever. And that's where Mace is kind of like, all right, I'm picking one. They've got one or two that they're picking. Uh, and then it'll be interesting because then the minority party gets yeah. to pick someone. And we haven't dropped this exclusive yet on Ask a Poll. But <clears throat> the first time her Democratic chair or, or her Democratic ranking member, Jerry Connolly from Northern Virginia, who I have covered a ton over the years and met his, of his cell phone. He, um, the first time he heard about the hearing was from Ask a Poll when I asked yeah, him that's, about that's it. That's the big I problem. Know. That's the big and problem. And so, and that's just the regular partisan BS yeah. because this falls under the umbrella of the Oversight Committee. Mm -hmm. Oversight Committee, that's the one in the House that has been investigating the impeachment of Joe Biden right. that they now shelved, right. that's now investigating an impeachment of Kamala Harris. So it's a hyper partisan committee. But if you all remember, the David Grush hearing was hyper nonpartisan. Right. And so right. hopefully after the election, even though it's just a week after, yeah. hopefully, um, yeah, lawmakers just focus on what's known and what's not. Well, that is going to be a, a very interesting to see. And I thank you again, Matt, for covering it all. And I, I do you think that really, before I let you go, do you, do you think anything big? Do you think we're going to, do you think November is actually going to be impactful or is it just going to be a lot of noise? What a lot of members feel, because again, it's going to be the end of this 118th Congress. But I think, especially the way Nancy Mace is approaching it, she wants it to be so much above approach. Yeah. That, or pardon me, that when they start the 119th Congress, her hope and the other members' hope is that they can just, like, the steam is already, already going to be there in the sails. And a lot of them are also hoping it'll stay nonpartisan and that they can just pick up where they left off with Congress that'll be coming in January and new presidential administration. So we'll see. We'll see. A lot uh of people. Yeah, so a lot of people are going to be watching. So, Matt, can you tell people if they want to come check out um, your site and everything, too, where, where, do, they, where do they go? Poll.com. Uh, you can find us on at tweets. Um, but, yeah, askapoll.com. You can subscribe for free. All of our audio is free to everyone. But then we have some VIP perks for uh, paying members. Like, hopefully, the New York Post, because they're non paying subscribers, but they've just been riding our wave. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, but I figured we'll let, let, you'll let you guys do your Twitter battle there. I love it. Um, thank you once again for joining us here. Keep doing what you're doing. You are really the only person out there that is doing the, the work that a lot of other reporters should be doing. So thank you. Dude, thanks for having us. All right. Appreciate See you. See you later, brother. All right, so there it is. That is Matt Laszlo, and there's a lot going on there. Sorry for the, some of the sound stuff there, too, and uh, in the beginning there's a little hiccup, but such is the world we live in right now. we gotta, we got to make this on the move. So thanks for being here today. Thank you for our wonderful sponsor, Rocket Money, and thank you to you guys. Yes, a little bit of a shorter episode here today, but nonetheless, wanted to make sure that we got this information out. What do you think? Put your comments in there. Let me know what you think about these hearings. Thank you. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.